a honeymoon with the sixth planet from the sun. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Next week, we have three super special events in the sky for you. The first is the opposition of Saturn on June 27th. The second is that we have a full moon also on June 27th. And the third, well, you can probably guess this one because I'm dancing. Yep, the third is a conjunction of the moon and Saturn on, you guessed it, June 27th. Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set up for just after sunset on June 27th, where if you face southeast, you'll see a brilliantly bright full moon. This is a special full moon because it's the closest full moon to the summer solstice. Traditionally, each full moon is given a nickname. The full moon in June has a few. One of them is the strawberry moon because strawberry season is at its peak in June and that's the best time for harvesting. People who live in the northern latitudes often refer to this full moon as the rose moon or the honeymoon. That's because the moon is close to the same position on the celestial sphere occupied by the sun on the winter solstice. Therefore, the moon rides very low across the sky. Since the moon is lower in the sky for observers in the northern hemisphere, if you live above 50 degrees north latitude, the moon will stay near the horizon most of the evening. As a result, you're seeing the moon through thicker layers of our atmosphere, and the moonlight is bent, making the moon take on a rosy or honey-colored hue, hence the names rose moon or honeymoon. Next to the moon, you'll see a relatively bright light that isn't twinkling. That is Dean's favorite planet, Saturn. Even though the full moon is right next to Saturn, it's particularly easy to see because Saturn is also at opposition this year on June 27th. Let's head into space and explain a little bit about what opposition means. When we view our solar system from high above the north pole of our sun, we can see Earth's orbit and Saturn's orbit. Earth is about 93 million miles away from the sun and it takes 365 and a quarter days for Earth to make one trip around the sun. In non-technical language, we refer to that as a year. Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun and is almost 900 million miles away. It moves much slower in its orbit and it takes almost 30 years to make one trip around the Sun. Therefore, Earth makes 30 trips around the Sun for every one trip of Saturn. When Saturn is at its greatest distance from Earth, it is on the other side of the Sun as seen from Earth, and that is called superior conjunction, which happened last year on December 21st. On that day, Saturn was a whopping one billion miles away from us. But six months later, Saturn will be lined up on the same side of the Sun as the Earth and a lot closer. So, if you think of it from our perspective, the Earth is in the middle and Saturn will be on the opposite side of the sky with respect to the Sun. This orientation of the Sun, the Earth, and a planet is called opposition. Whenever a planet is at opposition, it's always at its closest and brightest. So, this week, Saturn will be just over 841 million miles away, which is almost 200 million miles closer than it was back in December. So, check out Saturn this week and make sure you mark your calendars for the night of June 27th to watch the honeymoon rise at the same time as Saturn. And while you're looking at Saturn, ponder this little bit of trivia. Of all the planets in our solar system, Saturn has the least density. This means that for as big as Saturn is, it's not as heavy as you might think. Its density is so low that you can actually float Saturn in a bathtub full of water, if you had a bathtub big enough. Hmm, Saturn in a bathtub. I wonder if Saturn would leave a ring. Oh, brother. <laughs> On that note, happy Saturn watching and keep, keep looking, looking up. up.